Philip Lanigan came up with a great idea in his uh, in his column, and uh, we're just going to bring it up on screen here. So his column in the in the Daily Mail is talking about Gaelic games Netflix could fill the void of the current hiatus. So while things are quiet at the moment, obviously in a in a GEA sense. Anyway, Michael Verney joins me as he often does. Um, it's a fairly interesting concept, and it would be brilliant to actually have that available, wouldn't it? Oh, I'd be class because like. You find a lot of the games that you want to go back and look at. The footage, sometimes the footage is there on YouTube, so, sometimes not. Sometimes it's not great quality. If you had that that service where you're able to, able to go to Netflix and go through years and stuff like that, like I just know as well, like one of my friends is subscribed to the WWE Network. So it's the same. It would operate on the same premise. So yes, and just before you say it, it's not me. I use his service. I use his email. No, it's not me. Uh, I didn't pay for it, even though I would because I'm a shameless wrestling supporter. But you can go back through the years. You basically go back through the years. All the footage is there. The archive footage is absolutely unbelievable for GA people. Even going back, um, like looking at interviews and different things like that, it's all seriously interesting stuff. Going back and looking at all stars and all that. And um, there's definitely a service there if someone could pull it all together it would be it'd be unbelievable like imagine like killing an hour and a half watching you know one of the greatest games of all time or a game that is particularly means an awful lot to you it'd be class and i did throw it out to uh to, to followers on twitter and just said what are the sort of games that if, if you were to pick a top five so yeah that that's kind of the whole basis of this if you were to pick your top five most watched on a netflix ga what would it be so i threw it out and i'll just have a look at some of the comments that came in um we'll start off with um so just take me a second to bring it up here yeah so the first one jamie Barrett, the 91 all ireland um, the 2005 county final, so this is a Turles Sarsfields man, of course. 2010 All Ireland, that was Tip Kilkenny. The 2014 comeback for Tur uh, Tipperary against Galway and Turles, and that's one led by Lara Corbett, and I think Seamus Callan got a hat trick. And in the 2016 All Ireland, which again, massive Tipperary flavour to this, was Tipperary Hammer and the Cats. Uh, Steve Hoyne, he says, I would definitely subscribe to that service. I've been saying it for years that RT or TG Carr should upload their archive to a Netflix type streaming service that every championship game or county final at a pass could be viewed at the click of a button dolman sports recovery the cork watford games in the early to mid noughties would surely stand the test of time they would indeed um barry cleary wexford man galway tip 2016 to 18 best trilogy in hurling was that two of them incredible to watch in two of the three games there was never more than a score between them and actually philip lanigan who wrote the piece he talked about that limerick tip uh, trilogy in 2007 ronan fagan wexford versus cork drawn all ireland semi-final that's 2003 i'm sure he meant and the footballers with Mead in uh, 2008. We just take stock of a, of a few of those rather than reading through them all without commenting on them. Anything particularly stand out there for you before we go on and talk about our own choices? Yeah, bold stuff from Barry Cleary saying that uh, Tip Galway is the best trilogy in in Ireland. Considering like you're looking at, uh, you'd always think of the the Tip Kilkenny games, but uh, those those get those semi final games were absolutely extraordinary games. They were brilliant. Um, Jamie Barrett has a fair, has a fair tip flavour to his, all right. They'd be a bit like they'd be a bit. I'd be like that as well. Like some of the games I would like to watch are are awfully based. But this is the funny thing about it is like you've read out all comments there, and it's all completely different games that have been mentioned. And that was is what so would be so good about the service. It's not just like it's not like one series on Netflix you're watching. It's Everybody will be spread out because everybody has their own. No more than my top five games and my honourable mentions, they're probably completely different to yours, you know, because everybody has their own kind of personal opinion. Absolutely. We'll just look through a couple of more of the comments now while, while we're here. Um, Dara Doyle, Dublin, uh, Dublin versus Kerry 2011, 13, 16, and the two in 2019. Sports file have gone in heavy on you when you were marking uh, John Milan. What year was that in, actually? They've gone in like hard, like two two foot tackle, like. Um, 
Okay, let's jump back into the comments then. Clare Cork 2013, first game. Yeah, that was unbelievable. Limerick Cork 2018, semi final. Tip Wexford 2020, semi final. 2019, of course. Tip Kilkenny 2009 and 10. So many class games the last 10 years. That's Adrian O'Sullivan. Daniel O'Connell, Cork Limerick, Clare Galway semi final 2018. That was a serious weekend, wasn't it? I'm sure you remember it well. It was probably the best weekend of definitely the best weekend of hurling I've ever I've ever been involved in. I'd say um, you had two games, both went to uh, both went to extra time, and obviously Clare Clare and Galway Galway that went to another game, and it looked like Galway were out in their feet. Or old Mac ended up off the pitch. Joe Canning ended up off the pitch. They were still able to get a draw in extra time, and Asher like Nicky Quaid's flick and everything associated with that semi final uh, Limerick and. Limerick and Cork was just it was unbelievable. Ah, that was that was some weekend in all fairness. Yeah, it was absolutely class. And I remember being at Croke Park for both of them, and you were just like, the the, the downside was, geez, the hurling season is almost over. It's getting to this height, and you know it's going to be over soon. You're actually delighted to have a second Clare and Galway match to look forward to. Just I, imagine to say, say imagine, imagine to say that was that's like what sixteen or seventeen months ago, and you had some absolute gone beans calling for a black card in hurling a year and a half later. Yeah, well, we're agreed on that one. We'll jump back then into the comments and um, column at Prime Brawley goes, Mayo against Donegal 2012, Mayo Kerry replay 2014, Mayo Dublin replay 2015, Mayo Dublin replay 2016, and Mayo Dublin 2017. Compelling to see a team lose their biggest game in so many different ways. Fairly so <laughs> that is hard, isn't it? I, kind of, I, kind of, I was kind of thinking... Like this, when you, when you read out the first one, it's like Mayo Donegal twelve. Ah, that wasn't a particularly memorable final. And then he just keeps going in. Like I thought, sports final were gone two foot on me. This man's gone two foot on a whole county. He has indeed. He has indeed. We'll jump back in again. Uh, just to keep going through the comments. Dara Walsh, this should come with a health warning. Don't overdose on Watford Cork Munster finals. Fair point. Um, Mick Jones, arm, aka Kieran, who fears to speak of '98, Offaly's hurling odyssey, and then the final one from Marty Castles. Mead Kildare 97 part 1, part 2 and part 3, Mead Dublin 99 purely for the exhibition Ollie Murphy gave and Mead Loud 02 The Great Escape part 1. And and just, just, it's, it's, great, great. it's great to get it's people's amazing. opinions because your memory is jogged to games that you would have totally forgotten about. Like like immediately those games um, Mead and Kildare, Jody Devine is just the name that's in my head, Jody Devine. Unbelievable! It's just—it's funny how like one person or something can just come into your head. That was—I think that was a scot. That was—was was that the scorching hot summer? It was definitely roasting that summer anyway. And they were just uh, outrageous games, brilliant, Jed. That's why it's great to get um, it's great to get other people's opinions. Like there was very little overlap there on all the games as well. And I, I think of that Mead team and what comes to mind is Trevor Giles with the old sleeves and Tommy Dowd and players like this as well. So yeah, it's a nice little jaunt back through time. Now, if you were to pick your own top five, and I think it's important we don't just kind of throw out a, a big wide old list of a million games and, you know, nothing sticks. Let's pick a top five and let's go with no repeat pairings because, like, I could probably pick a few yeah, Tipperary yeah. Kilkenny ones. You could probably pick, you know, Offaly against whoever. And there might be a few repeat matchups because, you know, the provinces and just the way things end up. So no repeat pairings and you have to pick a top five. So start off with your number five there. Yeah, I'll I'll go from five to one, and I will just give a little line on each. Uh, number five is Dublin and Kerry, the twenty sixteen All Ireland semi final. Um, we're spoiled for choice in recent years, but this was an absolutely outrageous game. The, the one sixteen thing rather than twenty sixteen ahead of thirteen. Sixteen ahead of thirteen, yeah. Um, the thing that kind of sticks in my head, Dublin and Kerry were obviously ahead coming into the last kind of last couple of moments of the game and then Connolly got a pint off his left foot out underneath the Cusick one of the greatest points I've ever seen scored um, remember Kerry pushed up on Cluxton's kickouts just before half time got an unbelievable amount of joy and they're just thinking they have them stifled they have them rattled and coolness personified again Dublin were able to find a bit more down the stretch that was an outrageous game number four is uh, Tipperary and Kilkenny from 0-9 um, obviously, 14 is one of the games. The 14 final is one of the games that will probably be talked about. Maybe you'll even talk about it. I don't know. That was a very open game. This was an arm wrestle, an absolute struggle. This was um, this was some war now between the two of them. And it was the start of 
they had played in the league final earlier on that year. That was a pre-appetizer to what was going to come in this final. It was just outrageous. You had the controversy over the penalty at the end. Then you had Martin Comerford getting a goal within a minute, I'd say, of Shefflin getting the goal. And all of a sudden, from tip end and the, the four in a row, it was Kilkenny winning four in a row. It's just unbelievable. Uh, number three is Mayo in Dublin, the 2017 All-Ireland Football Final, uh, 117 to 116. Outrageous game. Um, it looked like, for the large part, as it has several times, that Mayo were finally going to get over the line, that they were finally going to do it. And then, um, to the best, I think that was the one with the GPS, was it? I think it was the one with the GPS. Oh, it's, uh, they all sort of blend together. At this yeah, yeah. I, 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 I might be wrong. On, I might be wrong on seventeen. It could that could have been eighteen. It was the one. That, it was the one. It with definitely the wasn't eighteen. Anyway. It was eighteen. Was Tyrone against Dublin? Sorry, yeah, it was. It was seventeen. Yeah, it was with the Lee Keegan and the GPS at the end of the match. Um, I just I remember sitting beside a Mayo fella and he was getting married later on that year. And I said to him at half time, "Jeez, wouldn't it be unreal if you had Sam Maguire?" Uh, at your wedding, he was getting married to a dub, and he just his eyes kind of lit up. He hadn't thought of it, and the whole way through, and the banter and everything, and we thought it was going to be their day, and unfortunately, it, it wasn't in high drama again. Uh, number two is I won't lie, the last the last two are sentimental ones. Awfully clear, the third game in '98 down in Turles, um, remembered as the Joe Dooley game. He got five points. He was absolutely outstanding. Uh, it was kind of the culmination of a long career with Offaly. This was him in his absolute pomp. It was everything that came with that as well. It was, you know, the drawn game the first day with Johnny Pilkington's goal to level it. The second day with Jimmy Cooney blowing up early and then going down to Turles this day, I just, there was just a sense that we just felt we were never going to lose. Stephen Byrne pulled off a couple of outrageous saves, one from Adam Markham that, that kind of sticks in the memory. And then the top one is Offaly versus Cork in the 2000 All-Ireland semi-final. Uh, 19 points to 16. Cork had beaten Offaly the year before, 19-15, in an absolute belter of a game. And um, this was kind of Offaly's last stand, and it's probably my last great, really great memory as an Offaly supporter. Um, Cork were obviously going for back-to-back. They were mad favourites on the day, and all the kind of old codgers with Offaly came up trumps. Brian Whelan, Michael Dignan, uh, Sean Og had, had literally... Hurled Johnny Pilkington up a stick for the first 15 minutes, and 10 minutes later, Johnny Pilkington had four points from play off him. Um, it was outrageous. Johnny Dooley gave one of his great performances midfield, ended up winning an All Star that year, got a point from about 100 yards out. That It was just phenomenal. And uh, yeah, that's my that's my top five. Honourable mentions to Claren Bridge and De La Salle, the 2011 All Ireland Club semi final, 53 scores. Uh, an amazing game that went extra time, topsy turvy. It was just an amazing game. And then a similar kind of a game like that was Mead and West Mead in the 2015 Leinster semi final. Uh, one of the great comebacks and West Mead's first defeat of Mead in God knows how long. But yeah, that's uh, that's my list. That's a fair monologue, and it's going to be hard to top. But uh, yeah, impressive list. I like what I'm seeing. I'm going to start off number five, Donegal Dublin 2014. The re- I don't know if it would be as good to watch back, but it was just the shock factor. And that's why it mightn't be as good to walk back, watch back, because you wouldn't have that shock factor. But what a game that was. I mean, Dublin should have had, had Donegal absolutely wrapped up after about 20 minutes. Then you have the comeback with the Ryan McHugh goal. Then uh, Colin McFadden with his switch hand goal to faint past Stephen Cluxon and then Ryan McHugh again with another goal. Just thought that was such a thrilling game because it was so unexpected. Uh, just beautiful football and exhibition. So uh, I was very, very impressed with that. Um, then the next game that I would have gone with is Cork Waterford 2003. Um, that was the one with John Milan where he, uh, he of course, got sent off. But you know, what a game it was, and the fact that Waterford dug it out when they were down to 14 men was unbelievable. Next one that I went with was Dublin Kerry in 2011, and the reason I would go with that one is because it was just one of those games where there was so much at stake. I mean, neither county wants to lose to each other, but certainly from a, from a, from a, from a Dublin point of view, they had gone behind, they sort of did their comeback, and then you had Bernard Brogan hitting an unbelievable point to put Dublin ahead. Then Kieran Donaghy scored a goal from 
or f- scored a point from from the Cusick side just from an absolute mile out of bomb. Um, you had Kevin Nolan obviously had scored a point as well, and then of course the famous winner at the end. But it was just the the atmosphere in the place was unbelievable. The quality of the scores was unbelievable. The matchups were unbelievable, and just a game that was topsy turvy. I think that's always going to be in that list. Then number two, I think you're going to have to go with Cork Clare back in 2011. I mean, what a game that was. Or, sorry, sorry, Cork Clare in 2013. Now, whether you're going to go for the, the drawn game or the replay, it's probably, you know, it depend, depends on yourself. But I just thought the replay was unbelievable. The way it started out with um, Shane O'Donnell getting that goal early on and obviously getting the hat-trick in the first half, just the theatre of Anthony Nash coming up and taking those penalties, which, of course, was in both games. Uh, Derek Conan coming coming in with the exclamation point goal towards the end and just even the explosion of joy in the final whistle when uh, when Clare obviously created a little bit of their own modern history and you felt for Jimmy Barry Murphy too but what a game it was Connor Connor McGrath also with that goal in the top corner around the hour mark it was it was just unbelievable stuff to watch Tony Kelly of course and then number one I had to think long and hard whether I was going to go for 2010 Tipperary beating Kilkenny or whether I was going to go with 2014, that unbelievable drawing game. And 2009 featured also. But I think I'm going to have to go with 2010 because it was just a spectacular thriller. So many things happened in the game. Uh, Again, like yourself, there's always an element of a sentimental choice there. And when your team has done well, especially when you're you know, creating a bit of history, Tipperary with a nine year famine, which the other counties probably isn't that long, but definitely for Tip at that point, it felt like a long time and go 18 months beforehand, or maybe even two years beforehand at the end of Babs Keaton's, Bab Keaton's reign, it didn't seem like it was going to come for, for years to come. But what a game it was, Larry Corbett's hat-trick, um, just even the whole thing of Noel McGrath and Owen Kelly doing the taps of the head to each other just firing brimstone from start to finish of that game I think that has to be number one honourable mentions Cork and Limerick 2018 and you could even say that for the drawn game down in Parky Cueve and the Croke Park one was brilliant too but Limerick really pulled away in extra time and then Mayo Dublin 2017 you mentioned it went through it so many games it's it's I'd love to get a few more suggestions from people watching in because it's, it's just very hard to actually narrow it down isn't it ah uh, it is very hard to narrow it down there's so many different games that you could choose from in all fairness um and there's some variety between the amount of games we're after talking about there. But as you said, the emotional kind of ones, the ones that pull or tug the heartstrings are usually the ones. Like there, I some of the off the games are definitely the ones I'd most like to go back watch. I think a couple of more comments are after coming in as, as we're chatting here. So um, Ronan Fagan says, was actually itching to mention the Armagh game, but held firm on me, Matty's goals uh, celebration versus uh, versus Armagh lingers. Um, Michael Kelly, or Michal Kelly, that day in 08 against Mead was one of the hottest days I've ever been at a match. I actually think beating Armagh was enjoyable and as big a shock. Then the heavens opened afterwards as Kerry beat Galway. Actually, I think that was a game that you were going to bring up, wasn't it? That that famous game in the rain when Michael Meehan went to town. Yeah, that was unreal. That was his probably best game for Galway. He ended up at 1-5. It was absolutely outrageous. He, um, he was on Mark O'Shea for a lot of it as well. He, he tormented him. Um, and it just did the whole thing in the rain as well and I think it was one of the first times that the floodlights came on in Crow Park as well it was uh, it was savage, a savage battle and probably though the one thing I do remember it for is Meehan's individual performance, that was him at his best and just uh, another little comment there, the Bill, Billy Donlan, the show that was done on the typical Kenny finals from 2009 to 11 was classy, yeah, I remember that being an RT one Christmas time, the drawn final in 2014, Cork Clare drawn final in 13, Kilkenny uh, Limerick semi-final in the rain in 2014 I think it was probably the Limerick Cork semi-final in 18 as well um, I actually think it's definitely worth mentioning that game between Limerick and Kilkenny in 2014 the one of Monsoon with the rain coming in sideways were you at Croke Park for that one? I, I, I'll never forget I, 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 it I wasn't, I wasn't in that day we were actually playing a league final with Burr the same day and um, it was actually lovely in Burr it was really nice weather and um, that monsoon, it was a, it was Richie Power. Was it Richie Power? Owen Larkin got the flick. Um, it was the bait. I think, I think it was actually Owen Larkin who got the touch. I'd have to watch it again. And I'm sure someone will correct us. The other thing that stood out was remember Shane Dowling with the one-handed point, threw it up and just whipped it over 
even though and like in those conditions yeah. it's outrageous and, and the iconic picture is the one of David Herity kind of dealing with a ball going over the bar do you remember that um, but that was that was like rain we've probably never seen before um, in a big big game it was um, it was outrageous yeah that was that was a class game and I, even just jogging forward in, in recent years like I suppose recency bias does come into it as well a bit but the, the when Limerick eventually did beat Kilkenny in that game down in Turles a couple of years ago that was another absolute belter. Jeez, we've had um in recent years in Hurlem, we've had some amount of classics. Like in all fairness, I love. I would always say though, I love the the arm wrestle, the real physical battle, as opposed to. Don't get me wrong, the twenty fourteen final was a brilliant game, but like, I just think when scores are are that high, that there's a maybe a bit too much space being afforded. That's why I take the 0-9 final over the fourteen final probably every day of the week. Mm, and actually, even some of those Watford games are worth mentioning. The Watford Kilkenny game in 2016, the drawn one at Croke Park. I think everyone expected Kilkenny to was true because um, Watford had been paced by Tipperary in that monster final. But great performance. Um, I think Austin Leeson stood out, Park Mahoney stood out, Jamie Barron, the ridiculously good hurler he is. Another Watford Kilkenny game, 2012. Do you remember the one in Thurles? I think Colin Fenley did the damage in extra time, but it was the game where Kevin Moran got sick on the field after giving an exhibition. 2013, yeah, because Kilkenny went on and got beaten after, yeah. I remember John Malam was up in the stands. He had only retired earlier that year or the previous winter, and you could just see that he was a, he was a man that want, wanted to be out on the pitch and couldn't handle the fact that he was watching on at this because he was probably still fresh and thought he could have something to offer, but that was an outrageous game, yeah. And obviously that was... That was before the Cork and um, that was before the Cork Clare games later on that year some brilliant games that year too in fairness mm, yeah actually Dublin Cork in that semi-final I thought was brilliant as much for the atmosphere as much as anything else any other games just before we finish up no just for, for club games um, the Cool and the Pierce game which you were involved in two years ago definitely is one of the best club games I've seen I mentioned the Claren Bridge de la Salle game already um, anyone from Borough or Offaly you know Borough and Clare Castle in 1998 both the draw and the replay uh, two outrageous games as well but there's probably we could probably do a separate one completely on club games because there have been so many good ones as well but um, yeah Whoever someone needs to get this, someone needs to get this going because they'd make an absolute fortune off it. I'd uh, maybe I'd well maybe I'd use someone else's login, but uh, I probably would pay. I probably would pay the tenner a month or whatever it is myself. Great stuff. Okay, that's our top five. Anyway, don't forget to head over to ourgame.ie for plenty more, and uh, we'll uh, chat again to you soon, Michael. Thanks, Shane. Come on.